Hi, everyone. Thank you for listening to Horror and Heels. If you're wondering how we're making this podcast, we're doing it through Anchor. You can go to Anchor FM to get started. It's free. They have creation tools that allow you to do it right on your phone or your computer. I edit. I'm actually recording this while I'm in my car waiting to go to my next client. They make life so, so easy. They even distribute your podcast for you. You can be heard on Spotify, Apple, other sites. It helps you upload if you want to make a Patreon or anything. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. I know zero, zero, zero about formatting and doing this and that and the other thing. And Anchor makes it so easy. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. If you want to learn more, go to the Anchor app or anchorfm.com to get started. Thank you and have a great day. I'm going back. Okay. It's it, literally every time you hit record. And, and, and red button came up warning me. Alicia is recording the call. So yeah, yeah I'm. A it's boy over. Snags. <laughs> Let's know you're recording them. Okay. How do I sound, by the way? I loud and clear. You're good. Loud and clear. Okay. You guys are good too. Okay. All right. So welcome back, everyone, to Horror and Heels. I'm your host, Alicia. And I'm Jen. And today we have a very special guest, Mr. Brandon McNulty, author of Bad Parts. And Brandon, go ahead and say hello to our audience. Hello, audience. How are you guys doing today? Um, so, Brandon, why don't you and I go ahead and kind of tell the audience how you and I met. This is the person I promised you all who knows me in real life, everyone. Um because as I think the audience has gathered, Jen and I live on different coasts. We haven't met in person yet. This nope. this romance that is blossoming quite quickly <laughs> is one of those things that, you know, people on MTV would be worried is a catfishing situation. Yeah. <laughs> so it's happening a little too quick. Yeah. So, uh, Brandon, why don't you go ahead and tell them all how we met? So we met would have been about three years ago on a cruise and um naturally because we're horror people we both attended a um escape room that they were holding i think on like the second or third day of the cruise so we i ended... have to stop brandon oh, 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 because stop. he might not remember this but <laughs> while we were online to sign up for the escape room i say to my husband i bet they have a stephen king book i've already read I'll grab it for when you're sleeping in the movie in the morning. <laughs> Brandon's mom hears Stephen King and goes, oh, you like horror. You have to meet my son. Best publisher, p- publicity agent of all time. Mom yeah. is in. Then we sign up for the escape room and they put us in the same team because we were literally signing up at the same time. And then the rest, I feel like. You were the only people we kept bumping into on this cruise. I, yeah, we literally couldn't escape you. And even when you were <laughs> sick and you were and like, because you, you, you got sick in the middle of the cruise and you were just wow. like on death's door for a few days there. And so, funny enough, that was because my child had uh, implanted. So I had some people get very bad fevers. The first day or two of implantation, didn't mm-hmm. know that, found that out later. And 10 months later, a miracle known as TJ was born. And actually, funnily enough, his due date was is your mom's birthday, but he was born a little later. Oh, that's, oh, that's random. Yeah. Random. Yeah. Yeah. So if anybody needs a pl- publicity agent, uh, call on Mama McNulty because she really... And and she's she's bored right now, so she'll be happy to take new work. I mean, aren't we all? So and pretty much everybody without a two year old, I think. Yeah. Um, and then we continued talk, talk, talking, and Brandon knew that I love to read. I had read his short story, worried about, and really enjoyed it. And he hit me up one day and was like, "Hey, I'm nearing the end of my novel journey here." Would you be my beta, one of my beta readers? 
and give feedback. And I was like, yes. And uh, I think I scared Brandon with how quickly I read the novel. I think it took me two days. I, no, I was thrilled you read it as fast as you did because I, I needed it in a pinch. And yeah. there, was, there were a bunch of my friends I asked and I was like, hey, do you have time? Can you get this in within the next couple of weeks or so? And they're like, nope. And then uh-huh. I, I reached out to you and I remember like thinking oh man she's not gonna have time she has a kid she's gonna be busy and then you're like oh no 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 send it send it and then two days later boom feedback i was like this is what i will tell everybody a newborn super easy they cuddles they take the bottle and they sleep okay this is all they do (laughs) um i would literally hold him in one arm he loved it i had a big i have this big boppy pillow that he would lay on but by two months my son was holding his own bottle because we're fatties in our family and don't try to hold back the food and uh, i would just sit there and read and he would stare at me and then start snoring and then wake himself up and uh, also he loved his big swing yeah you've got a lot of time when you've got an infant if you don't have other children um toddlers toddlers i wouldn't have time now now I I, I, now i have no experience in this area but from what i hear from friends it sounds like it's one way or the other like you have like the easy way with you or you have the the screaming baby 22 hours a day those are the ones i would give back those are the ones i'd be like well you can take that one back i'm gonna try again (laughs) no my son is very much like me he enjoys food and a nap as long as you provide those two items in that order. In that order. Yes, <laughs> very much in that order. So, Brandon, um, what gave you, well, why don't you tell everybody kind of the basic premise for bad parts, and then we'll go into some more questions in regards to that. All right. So, Bad Parts, it's a supernatural thriller, small town horror novel. It's about a guitarist named Ash Hudson who suffers a career ending hand injury. And what she does, she returns to her hometown in order to swap out her hand with an organ swapping demon. And uh, the catch is that uh, anybody who trades their parts to this demon, they cannot leave town or they cannot go more than 10 miles away from town without losing whatever they traded. So for instance, if you had lung cancer and you wanted a new set of lungs and you traded them away to the demon, you would get fresh, healthy ones in return. But if you tried to leave the area, they would just vanish right from your chest. Oh no. (laughs) Oh yes. Oh no. um, Yes. And so where did the idea for that come from you know it was just like an image in my head um one day i was thinking about this playground scene where somebody was dying on the playground and somebody walked up to them and just said something about like i can heal your wounds or something like that but you got to give me those wounded parts and at the time when it first hit me, it was just like, ah, that's that's a stupid idea. Maybe it'd be like a like a short story or maybe a like a, like a flash fiction, something like that. But as I started thinking about like the concept and maybe a, a scenario where you had a small town full of people and they all had different parts they needed to trade, and what would happen if the demon could only offer one of each part? Would that cause people to fight over them? What would be going on mm-hmm. with that? So that was early on where like the conflict started building and uh, for me writing bad parts um, was easy because I had a concept that really wrote the story for itself and uh, Mm. you know that that for me that is my favorite type of story to write one where it just emerges from the idea Um, yeah yeah, a lot of a lot of writers are more comfortable just you know plopping a few characters into a situation and the characters just take over the story I'm not so much that I usually build outward from the concept and then I'll worry about you know characters and setting and plot and all that Mm -hmm. stuff later on so when I met you on the cruise you were involved in pitch wars at the time yeah and uh that went clearly very well for you you won some awards there and stuff um it was so funny we'd be like hanging out and then brandon would like look at his watch and be like okay i gotta go like 
send this thing or update this thing because he like had time like structures to meet. I was like, yeah, God what? bless him. Send me another pina colada. <laughs> <laughs> he was working yeah. hard during that cruise. That was uh, and for listeners who don't know, Pitch Wars is a contest that um, new and aspiring writers, they can submit their work to and potentially get paired up with a mentor. Um, mm. And it, it's a great opportunity if you are working on a novel or you have one that's that's you know complete, but you're not sure how you can make it better or you need help improving whatever's wrong with it. Um, but I applied to it back in um, mid 2017 and it was just like for me it was just like kind of a, like a lottery ticket thing like oh there's a contest i'll just give it a shot i'll just throw bad parts in there see if anything happens and at the time i was able to submit to i think it was four different mentors and i submitted to three people who actually wanted horror and then there was this fourth girl her name was natasha and she didn't request horror specifically but she was into like urban fantasy and stuff like that so I figured, you know, maybe that's up rally. I'll just give it a shot, whatever. And uh, all of a sudden, a week later, I, she gets back to me and she's like, hey, I loved what I read of Bad Parts so far based on the first couple chapters that she requested. And she's like, you know, can you send me a synopsis and the full the full manuscript? Now, the thing was, I did have the full manuscript, but uh, I never expected to win. So I didn't have the synopsis ready at all, nor did I know mm -hmm. how to write one. And so I spent an entire afternoon in panic mode all over the internet trying to find, like, how do you write a synopsis? And yeah. uh, there was one really handy resource I found in there. It was basically like, like they had a template for you and everything. And I just, you know, crammed it together last minute, sent it off to Natasha. And I figured, well, well, there's no chance. I mean, come on. I just sent out the shittiest synopsis out there. What could this possibly work? And um, a week later, she's like, hey, I love bad parts. We're going to go with it. And we're going to spend the next couple of months making this as best as we can. And wow, just like it was it was huge because up till that point, um, bad parts was just like this wild idea I had that, uh, you know, a buddy of mine, he thought was really cool. And, you know, it was just the two of us who thought like, oh, it was a good idea. And then when you have like a total stranger who says, hey, this is great. This is this is something we could work with. This is something we could make better let's work on it. And I'm going to volunteer my time to help you with it. I mean, that was, that just meant the world to me. And Natasha Rollerson is her last name. She was just unbelievable. Um, but the, the catch with this was that uh, I uh, had to work with her for two months and she would send me like these edit letters and, you know, she's like, Hey, I love your book, but here's all the shit you need to fix. So, <laughs> you know, right back to the, the drawing board with like certain characters and things like that. And a lot, a lot that I learned from her was um, when you have characters in your story and you have like a bunch of them, like a, like a nice sized cast, it helps if you can tie them together in some way, whether it be like they have family ties or, you know, they have like a, like history together where, you know, they have old grudges or whatever it was. And initially I didn't have that with bad parts because I had like, you know, a bunch of characters in the town, but they didn't necessarily have um, all the, the the connections that you would expect as far as, you know, that would, that would bring about conflict in the story. Uh, Alicia, I know you read it, so you remember the character of Trent. And originally yeah. Trent was just like, uh, like in, in the story, he is the brother of Ash, the main character. And he, um, he had a leg injury as a result of her driving him off the road when they were teenagers and everything. And he resents her for it. Um, it originally he was not her brother. He was just a, um, I think he oh, was like, wow. an, yeah, he was like an old friend or an old boyfriend, but he was like kind of inconsequential to her. And, um, it wasn't until later drafts that I actually realized that, Oh, it would be a lot more interesting if they were brother oh, and yeah. sister. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh. I, I'm thinking of certain scenes now where a hundred percent, yes. Yeah, and, and the thing was, because um, Trent's kid, Jake, plays a major role in the story. Jake is blind because uh, Trent caused him to have an accident. So Trent feels bad about Jake and Ash feels bad about Trent. And that kind of mm. united all the characters in this family. You know, they all, you know, resented each other and they all had, you know, guilt that they had to you know, try and fix. So 
Um, but Natasha was, you know, she was all about, you know, how do we get these characters to have meaningful relationships and, you know, how do we connect them better? And all that was just super valuable working with her. And how? Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Finish. No, no, I, I, my thought just got <laughs> ran off the rails anyway. So, <laughs> no, I was going to ask you how long did it take you to write it before you got the mentor? So, how, because you had a finished manuscript. So, how long did that take? So, I wrote it, um, first year, or well, I wrote it back in 2016. I started it in July. And what happened was, um, I had been working on, a sci-fi dystopian novel up until that point and I submitted it to this workshop um, it was like a writer's workshop and usually around 20 people get into it every year but uh, pretty much every friend I have in my writing group that I used to attend on Thursdays they all went to it so naturally I thought like oh well I'll definitely get into this writing group no problem and then I got a rejection letter from them and it was just like for me it was just like wow what am I doing wrong? Like, like what, what just happened here? And uh, it was just one of those dark moments where it was like, man, maybe I should quit writing forever. Maybe I should just, just get away from this. Maybe I'm not ready for it. Or maybe I'm, I'll never be ready for it. But I just, you know, switched gears and I had that idea for bad parts. And I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll try something with this. So I wrote the first draft in about three months. Um, actually two months, I think. Yeah. Cause started in July, wow. finished it in early September. And I just, you know, hammered it out, just threw ideas on paper, saw where it went. It was a mess, but it was a good mess. And, yeah. uh, and then, unlike Stephen King with the Tommy knockers, he didn't decide to just publish it as a mess. As a- <laughs> he decided to, <laughs> so he decided to give him credit it. for that. Yeah. I, I got to tell you, I actually, I spoke to Stephen King back in, uh, 2013. He did a book tour for Dr. Sleep. And my friend, Sammy, she's been. I don't want to talk about it. (laughs) My stupid ex-husband caused me to miss Stephen King that year. So 2013 one. Yeah. The the Harvard one. Yeah. Because my my one friend, Sammy, she she and I were friends in college and um, she's been like one of my constant editors. Like we we had a writing group together and. one story I submitted to her, she just covered it in red ink and we were friends ever since. Mm -hmm. And so she ended up going to grad school in Boston. Stephen King was there that year. So I went there, you know, he held the event in a church, which was probably the most Stephen King thing ever. And uh, so what happened was he did a little reading from Dr. Sleep, five, 10 minutes, and then everybody got to run to the front of the altar to ask him a question. Like there was like this microphone waiting there and everything. And uh, my question, what's that? (laughs) I said Comic-Con style. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we all just ran out into the aisle. Speaking of a church though, you know that his daughter Naomi is a a minister, pastor. Yeah. Yeah. I remember okay. I remember reading that uh, yeah. I think in the, in the back of Horns by Joe Hill he mentions that yeah mm-hmm. his sister's a, a minister yeah wow but um we all ran up to the microphone I think I was like fifth in line and the question I asked him was uh what do you do about your revision process like how does that work cuz at the time I was really struggling with that so I figured you know ask him maybe he'll be able to help and Did he say he didn't have one was that <laughs> more or less yeah what what he said was um like I asked him I was like hey uh, you know what is your revision process like? Does it differ from like a short book, like uh, like Pet Cemetery, to a long book like Eleven Twenty Two Sixty Three? And and he basically just said like, well, I, I basically shit out these books and then I just dust the shit off and that's it. And I mean, it's it's not just even like the sometimes oh he doesn't even dust it. That's all. He just like, takes a little brush and like like one of the tiny like archaeology brushes, like super <laughs> small and just hits up a corner and exactly. then it's like we're good. Well, you do see that, though, in his acknowledgments. He acknowledges his editors quite fervently, and it's probably because that is his process, and they're like, oh, God damn, Steve. Okay. We'll <laughs> fix this. Don't worry. Oh. I mean, he can get away with a lot more than most of us because, I mean, he's so good. Yeah. But, I mean, I feel like if, if I wrote something like he did, you know, somebody would be like, you need to cut this down by 25 25- Thirty percent at least, and you'll get you know. there. You'll get there. It's just that, I mean, he paid his dues. I'm sure he probably got his stuff edited yeah. the shit out of in the beginning, and now they're just like people are eating your stuff up. Just I, like, I mean, yeah, I mean, especially, 
Yeah, and especially when you think about the stand and how that was cut down from like eleven 1, hundred to seven fifty pages, I think Ooh, it was. Wow, Lord. Have yeah. you read the there? unedited version? Bit. Yeah, I read the unedited yeah. version in college. It was everybody thinks it's like well, not everybody, but a lot of people are like, oh, it's his best book. It's the greatest thing in the world. And like the stand for me, it was just like it was kind of middle of the road. Stephen King. I just it didn't click with me like a lot of his. Uh, um, earlier stuff does like i love salem's lot and the dead zone and uh pet cemetery just amazing right. yeah um but i mean as far as like his big was ones that like your first introduction to horror which was it stephen king no it was rl stein when i grew up as a kid goosebumps was huge. i love goosebumps. but so oh you consider gosh. that your first because listen, absolutely i read it but let's get serious. When, no, no, no. Let's get serious. When you're eight years old eight, and you read The Haunted scary. Mask, that's terrifying. Well, the Haunted oh, Mask was so scary? at what age did you guys pivot? What do you mean pivot? pivot. That's just so scary. Have you read like, yeah. the basement? I can't see genuine. So in my town, yeah. in my town, the summer between third and fourth grade, you can get your adult reader card back in the day. And, um... So I got it, and my first book on my adult card was Stephen King's Pet Cemetery. So I think when oh. you go there <laughs> before fourth grade, it's kind of hard to go back. It's kind of oh, hard. To go back. Yeah. <laughs> See, I didn't, I didn't get into Stephen King till I was a teenager. I, um, I went down to my local library, like right down the road. I used to, I used to run every single day when I was a teenager. And uh, one day, I just ran we to the would library. Not have been friends back. Then. <laughs> Jen always tries to talk oh, to me about yeah. her exercises. I'm like, let me talk to you about this slice of tiramisu I just pounded down my mm, See, I used yeah, to but, be like that. But oh, anyway, okay. Yeah, I. Uh, saying, Brent, keep going. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> I don't, I'm not trying not to step on anybody's toes, but um, I, uh, you know, ran down the library. I saw Salem's Lot on the bottom shelf. It was like this paperback addiction edition. It had uh, a cover of some woman with like two bite marks on her neck. And I'm like, yeah, I'll pick that up and I'll see what it's like. And I was hooked ever since. I, I, I'm like a slow reader, but I just mowed through Salem's Lot in like four days. I couldn't get enough of it. You always say that about me. He, he'll, like, he will like recommend a book, and I'll be done with it, and he'll be like, "Uh, what just happened?" I, the last one you recommended, there's a broken heart. There's a broken thing where her heart should be. That I could not put that down. I couldn't either, but it took me like two weeks to read it. Oh, I think I was done in three days. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I do, though. Once I As put my baby, my my kid goes to bed at nine. My husband goes, plays his video games, and I come to the bed with my book. And you just mow through them. I, I see. Yeah. I wish I was a faster reader. I can't, can't do it. I, I'm so like into movies and TV. I love reading, but it's hard for me to sit and read. Now I like do audiobooks. And yeah, I, I, do me, but I also like. I actually haven't read a Stephen King book. I've seen Stephen King movies. I have not actually read. Oh, Jen, have you ever done? Um, on like Kindle Unlimited, you can get the the deal where you I get the ebook and the audiobook. I just I was looking because I was looking at your book and then I just saw that it's on Kindle Unlimited, so I got it. So yeah. I'm gonna read it. So I'm excited. Thank yeah, you. and then like it comes with the Audible and stuff. I love it. Yeah, there are certain books that they you can get the ebook and it automatically comes with the Audible. You get it, it for awesome. free yeah. and it will basically like it's great for me because like it keeps me focused. And what I'll do, I'll put yeah. the audio book at like two times speed and I will just mow yeah. through the pages. It's so good. It, it's cool because it goes with the Kindle book. So it, the Kindle mm -hmm. book will pick up where your audio book left off and vice versa. So if yeah. you were listening and then you want to read, it'll catch up to where you were, which I, I think that's very awesome. Oh, yeah. And I love is that. Uh, as you're going down the page, you can just follow the highlights. I, it's just because I, I just get distracted when I read. And that's part yeah. of why I'm so slow with it. But like when yeah. I have something like that, it's like it's holding me to it. And I, I love that about it. See, yeah. my problem with uh, the Audible is that then wherever the book is taking place, they speak in that accent. Mm. So like I could not have listened to the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I just recommended that for my book club. It's That's fantastic. Hilarious. Good. I saw a lot of great uh, yeah, people so, were raving about it. So
Grady Hendrix, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, That's funny. But I'm like, I could not, if I had to listen to that, I would have had to turn it off because (laughs) Southern (laughs) accent is so slow. Probably would have taken me longer to listen to it than to read it. Well, you could adjust (laughs) the reading speed, though. Oh, true. Yeah. Yeah, That's what I, I I always listen at at least 1.5 speed because it's just. It makes it much more smoother because yeah, so can, many audiobooks yeah. are slow with the way they read it because they yeah, want to. Okay, it. I didn't realize you could adjust right. this. Yeah, mm-hmm. that would be helpful. But yeah. I give it a me, shot. It it puts me in such a nice space for bed. Mm-hmm. I get you mm-hmm. absolutely for sleepy time. Okay, so, um, okay, wait, can I ask a question real quick? Do of course. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, you name I. As soon as I read that your character's name was Ash, I was like, that's awesome because Ash is also Evil Dead. And Everybody he says his... Yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted, like, did you do that on purpose? No. Or was it just... You know, it's uh, funny because I didn't even see Evil Dead until after I started writing the book. That's crazy. Yeah. I actually, and Ash the character, she, um, I first wrote her back in... 2013 in a short story and um so i mean she's been around forever and uh i just i I thought it was just like a a name that just kind of expresses who she is without yeah as a person who has read ash yes her name fits yeah Yeah. exactly she can't be like isabella or something like that she is an ash you know so i like Um, that's really cool that you picked an it's just an iconic horror character so it's yeah. you know you know and it's funny because i've had people like reach out to me on twitter when i would be pitching the book or something like that and they'll be like oh ash just like evil dead and like i i do get that all the time it's like a, yeah it's crazy because i mean i and i think you know people recognize that whenever you're writing like a, a horror story you're gonna be throwing back to you know things that influenced you like the yeah. first character mentioned in my book uh is a guy he's like an old guy named uh, john mccready and that's a reference to john carpenter's the thing the main character is jr yeah, yeah, mccready Mac- or, or rj oh, mccready cool. <laughs> but, uh, yeah yeah but uh like and, and i think that's something like a lot of authors do where they just you know throw back to you know the old stuff that influenced them so yeah. i mean i'm i'm fine with people mistaking my ash for evil dad ash, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that, that like works for me for well i just like the connection of he lost like it's a body part so it's not just that it's ash but it's that she the body part thing exchange and how he has to cut off his arm and yeah alert for farewell to arms <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm gonna put in the description all the movies and or books that we kind of spoil because i feel like that'll just happen during the nature of a conversation so yeah um and speaking of ash as you said you've been working on her since 2013 you clearly love her Mm -hmm. do you feel that an author clearly loving his main protagonist and working them through a body of works um changes how um they see that character if they can be objective about them i always think of stephen king with roland and i love the dark tower but it was very clear he didn't want any of his main four to die because you see he kind of just sends them to new york they're all still alive Roland goes back to the tower. He never dies. Um, And I don't know if I'm allowed to... Oh, no, I am, because this is on the books. Uh, This is part one of a three-part series, Bad Parts. Yeah. Um, So clearly, you really love Ash. Mm -hmm. Um, So going forward, did that... um, Did that make you less objective in how you wrote her? Not necessarily because, I mean, you've read the book and you know I will put the characters through anything. I mean, oh, I will literally I will yeah. I will torture them left and right if I have to. And um, I know like a lot of writers and even some of my friends who are writers who they get so attached to their characters and they just, you know, they can't even let them get harmed, let alone killed. And I've, I've just never been that way. I, I don't. um 
I, I, it, for me, it's like, I think you have to be honest with the storytelling and you have to, if they're in a situation where they have to die, then they should die. Or if they're in a situation where they have to get harmed, I mean, they have to get harmed. That's that uh, one of the things I hate about a lot of horror movies is that um, you have a monster that's introduced in the first, you know, half hour of the movie and you see it, it goes around and it's just terrorizing everybody and it's ripping people to shreds and it's this this unstoppable force and it'll kill anything in front of it. And then later on in the in the middle of the movie or toward the end of the movie, when it encounters like the group of the heroes, all of a sudden it's a clumsy monster. And all of a sudden, yeah. instead of just, you know, killing them without even thinking, it hesitates and it hesitates just long enough for them to get away. And whenever that happens in, in movies, it just takes me right out because it's just like I hate seeing punches get pulled like that. And so, I mean, when I write stories, I always want to be honest. And if it, if the villain is, you know, somebody capable of you know, just killing my hero or killing my side characters or whoever, I'm going to let it happen because I mean that's the honest way to do it. Yeah. They do that in action movies too. I've been, I've yes. been talking about this for months. It's like the the good guy will kill all these random people to get to the main bad guy who actually killed their wife or their sister or yeah. their whoever. And then as soon as they get to that person, they just hold the gun or hesitate. And I'm like, that's the person who actually killed that. You killed all these other, and mm -hmm. I know they're not innocent people, but all these lackeys, no problem. But then when you get to the person who but, actually did yeah. it. Here's the thing with action movies, whereas that kind of makes more sense to me because the quote unquote good guy who's avenging, right? Mm -hmm. When he gets to the main person, there's a reason he's been hunting them down emotionally, physically. He has built up getting to them so much in his head that it that can bring on a paralyzing fear comedians, actors, actresses talk about that all the time where they've visualized their big moment. They've seen it in their head. And when they get there, they just freeze. So in action movies, I actually do believe that more because we're dealing with a full human sentient being. With monsters, unless uh, they have informed us that they have some sentience in some part along the story, it's much less believable than a real human freezing when it's time to finally yeah. commit their mission. Also, because if they complete their mission, they've already lost everything before this. Yeah. So really, it was the mission that kept them emotionally, physically going. Now they're there, and what are they going to do if they complete this? So that I find more believable than the monster trope. I could see that. Yeah. yeah. And I think some movies do that better and show that reality of emotion better than others. Yeah, yeah. I uh, when you were talking, I thought about uh, John Wick. I don't know if you guys have seen mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, yes. You know, in in the club shootout in the middle of the movie, um, yeah. when he the catches first? up. Yeah, the first one when he catches up to um, the guy who plays Theon Greyjoy in Game of yeah. Thrones. Uh, yeah, the yeah, the the, the Russian. Yeah. mobster's son and he's john wick is just shooting everybody up in the club and when he sees him in the swimming pool he just freezes and his eyes just lock on him and he has yeah. that moment that alicia just explained so yeah i could totally buy that especially like with john wick processing like what does this mean for me i finally yeah. caught up to the guy who you know I mean, took away jason my manzoukas was yeah. in it so just assume i've seen it okay everyone <laughs> if jason manzoukas is in it assume i've seen it you've seen it Jeez. Once again, Jason, we love you. Come on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I will say it every episode until we <laughs> until it <happens. laughs> If only the man had social media. Um, <laughs> now, as far as writers, we talked about Stephen King a little bit. Um, but who do you feel really influenced your creative process? Hmm. Are we talking in general or with bad parts? In general. In general, okay. Um, Stephen King would be big, obviously. Uh, Joe Abercrombie is actually a huge influence of mine. I don't know if you guys have read him. I have not. He writes grimdark fantasy, and I don't read a yeah, I don't read a whole lot of like fantasy stuff. Um, but I, for whatever reason, I just got into Joe Abercrombie and his like. I, I guess 
I mean, he's a writer, but I guess you could say like his directing style is very dark. His plots are very grim as far as like, like, you know, characters who, you know, you would think like, oh, well, this is going to be a happy ending and it's not. And that's not necessarily saying it's going to be a tragic ending, but it'll, it'll be mixed or it may be tragic. It's, it, it's hard Realistic. to predict with him. <laughs> and, um, I read a lot of him around my mid twenties and he was definitely a big influence on me. I just, everything about him. I just liked his writing style, his characters. Um, and they're, they're, he, his, uh, his stories kind of remind me a little bit of game of Thrones, but they have their own identity. It's, um, it's something like I would definitely recommend to, you know, the dark fiction crowd, even if you don't read a lot of like medieval fantasy, his stuff is just, it, the writing is tight. It's not like he explains what emblem is on every single shield or anything like that. That's what turns me off from Game of Thrones. Like I try to get into it and then George R. R. Martin will be talking about what the characters are wearing for two paragraphs. And it's just like, oh, I can't do this, man. I just can't. Yeah. Well, that's why we still have three novels to go. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And no end in sight. Um, now, I do have to just interrupt you, Brandon. Yeah, you, go ahead. you said mid 20s. Did anybody else clock that? He said that like he's old. Brandon, tell <laughs> the people how old you are at home. I'm 30, but I feel like my window is closing. Oh. <laughs> oh. 30, 30, oh, wait, which window? window's closed? I got a lot of. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest, though. I, I mean, I felt like my window was closing in my 20s. So, I mean, it's oh, just, yeah. that's just the. I, I just. Me runs every day, doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, feels like his window's closing. If his I is mean, closing, seriously? mine is nailed shut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to say, I've, I've been tossed in a coffin at this point. <laughs> Good lord. I'll get my shovel, I'll bury you too, it'll be all right. Yeah. But, uh, uh, oh, I've, lord. Like, I've gotten post-pregnancy, you don't have a shovel big enough to <laughs> By the way, in case nobody knows, I find burial creepy as fuck cremate me or feed me to a shark the, the, we're not why why are we wasting good good land i'm, I, I'm not about that like shark that's too much work me. yeah i mean the sharks would appreciate it yeah 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 i mean listen there is a lot of good blubber on this it would be like eating a whale <laughs> nice what, what, sea lion. <laughs> what about uh what about being donated to science Oh yeah, no, that's actually I. That is my yes. That, oh, that, that 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 is real. Yes. Okay, so that Ooh. you're that and organ donation. Those are on. Okay, my, that, those are on. They, my, there's so, a book. So so donate right. to science, and the leftovers go go to the sharks. Then yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. All right. They actually, especially like, because have... well, no, I have you know you. I think both of you know I have that genetic skin disorder, G Darius disease. It's a gene mutation i think it's very important if people have rare disorders and feel like it would be appropriate for them i th i think donating to people who can research that and learn for that for future generations is an excellent yeah. thing to do and that is my goal and maybe maybe one day they can find a cure and as as a guy who wrote a book about organ swapping demons i agree with you <laughs> so <laughs> Oh God! I Absolutely. I would swap my skin so fucking fast with that demon. You don't. Know. <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, let me the know. The town you. sounds lovely. I'll fucking <laughs> even care. Jesus Christ. Um. Well, also I love that too because that adds a very nice kind of murder mystery element to the book. Um. That I feel like that was my biggest contribution to is I kind of pointed out to Brandon that he had said a phrase two or three times about a specific character that lets you know who they are in the story too glaringly. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I liked, um, I liked seeing that change. And I think, I think that definitely helped move it along. Oh, it did. Mm -hmm. And, would you believe like the the type of story that intimidates me the most to write is mysteries. They just like anytime I read a mystery, I'm just blown away at how like, how do you how, right. how do you how do you keep it all a secret while still giving the readers enough information 
to keep them interested and, and engaged. For it's, the record, I just want to say, when we say mystery, we are not talking Gone Girl, and we are not talking Girl on the Train. I just yeah. want to be very clear. There was <laughs> Those are thrillers, mystery. yes. There yeah. was zero mystery. We knew who did yeah. it. Yeah. I once, when I, I read Girl on the Train, I knew I was going to hate it. Don't ask me why I read it. Um, my coworker was reading it at the same time, and she only had like 30 pages left to go. And she's like, I can't wait to find out who the murderer is. And I'm like, <laughs> I look at her and I want to be like, that was back on page 27 when she said, the babysitter. What the fuck are you talking about right now? And I was like, oh, okay. And she looked at me like, you know, don't you? And I'm like, and I still had like 150 pages to go. And I'm like, yeah. Like, Anybody yeah. actually reading this book knows. Yeah. And nobody knowledge. believes the affair is with the therapist, even though that's what they're trying to make you believe. Nobody buys that. Nobody yeah. thinks that. I could not get into that book, uh, no. Girl on the Train. I Now, Gone Girl, on the other hand, I loved Gone Girl. I thought it was great. But uh, Girl on the Train, I listened to the audiobook and I just could not get into it. I just, mm. it, no, it never, hard. yeah, it never clicked for me. So I don't know. I didn't even bother to watch the movie. Yeah. I, read, I read Girl on the Train and saw the movie. I, I thought they were okay. I never, I saw Gone Girl. I didn't read that one. Yeah. She watched Gone Girl because uh, she's big Ben Affleck fan. Oh. No? Why are you just, what? No. <laughs> just... No? Oh, I am. I just assume everybody is. Oh, so you were projecting on me. <laughs> I was projecting like. Projecting my, my love. Wow. I have never in my life been yeah. <laughs> I love Ben Affleck. She just shut you down. But it's very oh, but Jen, you have to agree. You and I usually agree on men. Yes, yes, we do. Yeah. We do. No, that was just strange because I just I had never said like I don't hate him or anything. Oh. He's just, just not the reason I would have watched sure, the movie. Sure looked like you did. That was, that was quite a face you made. Was... <laughs> I have a I have a problem with facial expression. That was I what I really want to do is play. There was no room for interpretation there. Really it was happened. just that was that was never no way, no Ben Affleck. We're no Cross him off the list for good. This is why I shouldn't video talk because I can, <laughs> I can, my face betrays me at every chance it gets. I try to be like <laughs> diplomatic, and then my face is just like, nope, we're not doing that. Oh, oh. so you love Ben Affleck? That's good to know. <laughs> Six days, Brian loves Ben Affleck. Honestly, <laughs> there's not, there's nothing wrong with the guy. I think no, the town is, is a great movie. Town is great. That the other night. Um, he was the yeah. only he was the only decent part of Batman versus Superman. So I mean, there is that. Yeah. Well, I mean, now we buy a new Batman. Let's get Robert Pattinson. Yeah. You can't get enough of those. I <laughs> when they first announced it, I was like, oh no, it's the Twilight guy. And then I watched um, the movie Good Time. Yeah. I he, and I thought he was pretty good in that. So I'm reserving judgment I, until. I'm not judging movie. after Heath Ledger is Joker. I'm like, oh, okay, I will never judge again. Because right. when I said Heath Ledger, I was like, the Brokeback Mountain and 10 Things I Hate About You Guys going to be the Joker? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then that his scene, I was like, oh, like I couldn't even look away. It was He was mm. so phenomenal just in those first few minutes. I was like, oh, crap, we are in for it now. And it was one of the greatest performances ever. So I'm always like, yeah. I can't judge till I see it. That movie was the kick in the ass that made me want to become a writer. Yeah. Dark Knight, when I, I remember walking out of the theater and I was just so blown away by it. And it's like, I need to do that. And like, like for years I had felt like, oh, I, I would love to tell stories. But I mean, you know, I, I'm too lazy for that. But when I walked yeah. out of the theater after seeing Dark Knight, I was like, wow, that was just so amazing. I remember like just latching on to every line of dialogue and you know heath was just unbelievable in that movie it was i mean yeah it yeah. was it just it, it hit me at the right time in my life i was coming right out of high school going into college and it, it just like you know finding yourself and trying to you know decide who you want to be for the rest of your life and it's like okay i want to write something like that yeah mm. did so you cool. see jen and i's face when you did yeah. the line on that yeah, the what? We were like, <laughs> we were oh. like at a high school going into college. What the? Back when my window was shutting. <laughs> <laughs> and then I saw myself in the, in the thing and I was like, shit, right in face again. <laughs> and then I, I hope he doesn't got gotcha. you. <laughs> I was like, I hope he doesn't think I think his story sucks. <laughs> I was like, no, it was. We're, we're just realizing how old we are. <laughs> I swear oh, to God, man. so we 
we're doing a crossover podcast with two guys next week, and I kind of want to text them and be like, right now, how old are you, motherfuckers? Let's get to that on the right now. <laughs> we are not um, doing any dates funny. or it's anything. It's very funny, Jen, since I know Brandon very well, I felt no need to put on makeup or anything for this. Oh, I'm God. telling you right now. Uh, those two gentlemen, <laughs> I'll be in a full face. <laughs> Just like you I was for Brandon? Ryan. Just like I was for Ryan. <laughs> uh, didn't even, wow okay yeah well i mean we want to try to look younger i didn't realize we were going to be this old you no no years. no as long as you believe your window is still open you're good I, mine's oh, been so, shutting since like so, the fourth grade so it, it's since just the fourth no, grade it's no, just no. It, i just can feel it shutting you know it's I just feel, like I've been wanting to be an actress since I was a little, and I, at six years old, I told my mom that I was done. I was like, "Well, that's it. I missed my wind." I thought six years old was when I thought I was like done. <laughs> I don't know why, but I was like, well, "You guys, I'm on like actor. a different, totally different trajectory mindset." I'm like, "Ooh, when I'm 50, TJ will be in high school." I'm like, "I'm gonna open a B and B, get things started." <laughs> I'm really, like, my window's completely different than yours. Wow. I don't know what that is. I'm like, I'll be these- John Kay. Listen, you, once you have kids too, your window it, it's very it's very uh, based on payment. So I'm like, ah, oh, once I can stop paying this goddamn day, and my daycare is amazing, <laughs> and I love them, props, and right. I pay any cent to have him there. But can't wait for that note to be done. <laughs> oh, so expensive. I so I have friends expensive. who they they put their kids in daycare, and it costs them like half their monthly salary it's just ridiculous yeah. i'm just gonna put a, a pole in the middle of the room and put a leash on him and <laughs> <laughs> and yes. i mean it works there. it works i'm not gonna say it doesn't <laughs> who am i to judge a um, bowl of food and water on the side it'll be fine so speaking of celebrities if you were to cast bad parts who would be your people good question and I, um, tell you, I have a person in my head for Ash, and I'm kind of interested to see if it's the same person. I've thought of a couple different ones. Um, I think if you, um, the chick from Happy, Happy Death Day, if you dyed her hair, <gasps> oh, I, like that. I think she would be a good fit. Because I think she has the attitude for it. Oh, you're looking her I, up I, now? I can't she, picture her. I, she's, she's like a nicer Blake Light. I don't, I don't want to say she's, that. She's, um. God, I love she Blake reminds Lively. me of Blake Lively. I, I mean, she she looks nothing like oh, Ash as far Jessica as like Jessica Rothe. I think that's her. Yeah, the, the Trey Galvin. That's yeah, Trey. Yeah, Trey. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, she. Uh, if if she, you know, dyed her hair black, got the dreads, got the tattoos, I think she would be a good Ash. Um, there was another one I was thinking about. I think oh, she was in um, Ten Cloverfield Lane. Uh, mm. Mary, Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Mary Elizabeth Winstead, yes. My brother yeah. love her. She's she a Scott pretty... Pilgrim. So that um, neither... I think she... Yeah. So I think she looks the those part. Two. No, <laughs> neither one of those two were my person. And maybe you didn't meet... Maybe you didn't watch this movie, so maybe that's why she's not your person. Samantha Weaving from Ready or Not. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I oh, saw that last year. Yeah. Yeah, that's Jeez. I, I gotta rewatch that. Listen, you gotta love. First of all, you gotta listen. She took a hand Samara injury. Samara Weaving, right? Yeah. yeah, she took a hand injury, and in ready or not, like nobody's yes. fucking business. She could totally be Ash. She yeah. could totally oh, be Ash. Definitely. She was my person. I was thinking when I watched the movie, I was thinking about that because it was right through the hand. Oh, and I was like, was, oh, oh man. Oh. I gotta rewatch that. That's gonna be one of my October yeah. movies. By the sure. way, anything with Adam Brody, I can rewatch all the time. I know have... you're Adam Brody. I say this all the time. This he isn't. Is. I'm, I know. I'm googling him right now. Hold on. You oh, know who Adam right Brody now. is. Okay, now I recognize him. Yeah, I didn't know him by name. That's fair. You're such a boy. I, <laughs> I can't help it. Don't apologize for that. <laughs> Oh man! I didn't, but to be I fair, I didn't know, know any of these he people's such names. A name. I, he is the second build cast member in that what? movie after what Samara. Was he on? Like what? what, what I didn't even know her name. So he was the impeccable David Rogalski on Gilmore Girls. Then 
The OC. I was going to say the OC. Him, and he was Seth. Our poor Lane on Gilmore Girls was never the same. She had to settle for Zach, that poop bag. <laughs> I'm, I'm still not over it. 30 years later, I'm not over it. Um, no, I'm kidding. 20 years later, I'm not over it. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Moving on. And then, and now he is in, the show he is currently on is Single Parents on ABC. He plays, um the dad of one of the kids who is out of the picture for a while and has since come back. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I just looked it up. He was in scream four. Okay. Yeah. I saw that in theaters, but I have no memory of it. And it's probably for the best. I don't either. Yeah. Scream coming out with a new four. one. Scream four of the four was the best after one. Okay. Actually, I don't. And, and Jen can, Jen can attest that I usually see the twist. That one got me. Oh, That's what's got me. Really? Mm-hmm. I, I saw it. I don't remember it. I need to rewatch it. Plus, Maybe I gotta say, Emma Roberts. Scene one and four. Because em- I, I have this thing with. Never leave horror. You're doing great. Just keep it. She is. I love her in America Horror, American Horror Story. I think she's fantastic. And speaking of American Horror Story, have either of you been watching Ratchet on. Never. Not yet. I've started. I had a, a buddy of mine recommended it to me last week. It's about what is it about uh, mental hospitals in the '60s or something like that? Or? Well, so did you never see One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? Oh, I've seen. I know who Nurse okay, Ratchet is. Okay, so yeah, so it's her basically origin story in that hospital. Oh, it's it's legitimately her. Oh, oh I didn't know legitimately that. Legitimately her. Yes. Oh, I thought it was just like like a fancy title. Then. No, no, no. It's like, her. Yeah, she's the actual character. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's her, and then... Oh, yeah, now I definitely have to watch it. um, Her going to that institution, the reason why she's there to work and stuff. That book, uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, that has one of my favorite scenes ever. And and the movie has the scene, too, if I remember correctly. Uh, It's where um, McMurphy tries to lift the... The machine and he can't, yeah. he can't do it but he says at least i tried that just oh man yeah that blew me away when i when i read it the first time just i love that i've I mean, never read it or seen it I, I, I at least watch it though the movie's fantastic yeah. the music yeah. movie's great yeah. you can see why nicholson was nominated oh he's just so charismatic <laughs> and it's disgusting yeah, yeah. <laughs> i hate him so good <laughs> yeah. yeah um and then who would you cast for Ash's father? Oh, man. Who was hashtag father goals? Love this man. Yeah, let me see. I'm trying to think. Because he's about 60 in the book. Mm-hmm. I'd... I mean, what's my budget here? Can I get, like, Denzel in there? <laughs> anybody. The world. So anybody you want. Whoever. Yes. Yeah. Denzel. I, I'd Denzel. like Denzel. If, if we have to go lower on the budget, probably Dennis Haysbert, the Allstate guy. Yeah, yeah, I don't know who he don't, no, I know who he is by name. Those Allstate commercials are disrespectful to that man. He is not the Allstate guy. He has a. I large... called him Dennis Haysbert before I called him <laughs> I the Allstate you guy. Okay. You did. You did. <laughs> I, mean, I, I. Those commercials make me so mad. I'm like, that man deserves better than that. Don't you call him the Allstate guy? <laughs> he's fantastic. Oh, he's been the president. In 24, yeah, he was amazing. Yeah. It's a big deal. It is said that you do Dennis Haysbert and comes up insurance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's done a lot guy. of stuff. I mean, the man's been in Kung Fu Panda, for goodness sake. Show him some he was, respect. He was in Heat as well. Yeah. Back in the 90s. Tech that too. Was one of his earlier roles. <laughs> yeah. He's done a lot. Oh, he was in the remake of Sin City. Oh, he was in Dark Tower. I didn't there see Dark go. Tower. Alicia, I have to be honest. I'm not a Dark Tower fan. I just, I read the first two books and could not get into it. Oh, that's why you're not a fan. Yeah. <laughs> you got to get at least through the third. It's what everybody <sighs> says. What, what, see, I mean, that's, what, what that's such a serious? commitment. Like, that's a far way you got to get in <laughs> I, to start to like I know, them. I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Listen, it's not for everybody, okay? Okay? Listen, there are people out there who read Nora Roberts. I I don't understand it, but it happens. It's fine. I mean, Brandon, you're wrong, but it's fine. (laughs) 
<laughs> See, uh, the the impression I have of Dark Tower from like what I hear about it is like, okay, the first book is about the world building, the second book is about some of the characters, and then it starts going. But I I had to force myself to those first two books, and then people tell me that the ending is garbage, and it's just like, why am oh. I fighting so hard? And it's like, yeah, what's the, what, what the is, ending what's the is absolutely not garbage. I don't know what piece of shit told you that. Uh, Several pieces of shit. <laughs> have them message me. I'll unconfuse them. But this is okay. I will say there are parts of the ending not great. Mm-hmm. However, I don't think, here's the thing, Stephen King likes to, likes to unite worlds all the time. It's his thing, it's his jam, it's his beat. If you see, he has now linked the Mr. Mercedes trilogy with The Outsider, with a story, and if it bleeds, like, he likes to build worlds upon worlds upon worlds. If he doesn't end the tower the way he ends the tower, he can no longer build into or onto the tower. The tower is done. Okay. So I understand. Listen. these The people who say the Dark Tower ending sucks are the people who like nice, clean endings. Like, they're probably the same people bitching about the ending of Midsommar. They didn't get it. I'm sorry Loved for it. them. Loved it. Don't know what you yeah. didn't get. But to be fair, that ending is not very finite either. Mm-hmm. You don't... You Us as the visual assume that she chooses to stay with her new family, with her new cult. Mm-hmm. Think she does Or your no, face no, is creepy. She does, and I, yeah. yeah, that's, that's you not You know me, what? But... I gotta be honest. Mm. It was the first horror movie in my life that with the exception of the one main academic guy. Cheaty. Cheaty. Yeah, I didn't want to do that, but. (laughs) um, Cheaty. Better than the black guy. I would rather just call him Cheaty. Cheaty. Uh, But no, no, no. William Jackson Harper. I knew his real name, but I could not remember. His show name is Josh. I just looked it up. Okay. Everybody who else else who died you're shitty people reevaluate how you treat others and then you won't be getting killed in a switzerland right right just saying they 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 went all about that all yeah there was there was some harsh justice in that movie i i loved it i watched it last year like right before halloween and cults just freaked me out so it was right up my alley and uh I think, and even just like some of the cinematography, like like they oh, had like those so upside well. down visuals, and like yeah. just, and that was just leading in. They weren't even trying to be scary. They were just disorienting yeah. you little by little like, over the course of the story, and that was very cool. The brightness yeah. and crispness of it too. Kind yeah, of I love contrast to the Pew. darkness of mm-hmm. the situation they were in. And then when they do bring on the nighttime, it's even worse because it's just like you're so used to the the sunshine and the idyllic yeah. setting and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Could we just say? Amazing profit on that. They made it for nine million. Box office gross USA only was twenty seven million. Ooh, they made That's out like amazing. Because imagine, three I times. can't imagine what it. For those it, of you I, don't I, I sense it probably did very well for, internationally. Yeah, for a horror movie, that's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm trying Especially to. Especially not having any big stars in it or any known characters. Well, Will Poulter. Who played Mark, the one we all wanted to get got first. He's been in everything. You know who he is. He's yeah. in Maid Runner, Where are the Millers, The Revenant, Narnia. Oh, Jack- that guy. Oh, yeah, that guy. Okay, yeah. Yes. yeah, he I was actually... he was their big name. Yeah. Florence Pugh is very good, but I don't think that she had anything. I mean, she had no. some. She was, I just... was she was she the girlfriend? She's the main girl. She yeah, was Florence Pugh. Yeah. Yeah, she, she was, was in the commuter. commuter. But um, but I'm saying all her big stuff pretty much came out all the same year. Like she did mid yeah. fighting with my family, uh, other, little yeah, women, yeah, and yeah. then her new one, Black Widow, comes out. Well, who knows when with this whole COVID stuff? But it was due to come out this year. Yeah. Yeah. I just looked it up. It said they made 48 million. So. 
that's oh internationally not, yeah, yeah okay. total yeah or total yeah, yeah. okay that's, that's and, and that you know they probably could have made even more money if they cut that movie down a little more because i think it was it was well over two hours oh yeah because yeah. i remember i actually yeah. i wanted to see it in theaters but it was in for like two weeks and it was out and it was just yeah. like that like i was trying to get to go with a buddy of mine and he was like, yeah, let's, let's go on Saturday. And then it was, it was out of theaters. Two hours, 18 minutes. Yeah. And there's yeah. an extended cut I really want to see because. Um, <laughs> Who's got time for that? I, I do. <laughs> Even though my window's shutting, I, I still have time to watch <laughs> the extended cut of Midsummer. You're going to need glasses by the time you get I there, have so. to be <laughs> honest with, I have to be honest with everyone. I was watching that and my two-year-old was running all around my house. When yeah. are you not honest with us? I, I just want to ask. Never, because, never. Yeah, exactly. But I feel like that's probably not a great thing to admit. Like, the other day I was watching The Boys and the Band on Netflix. Now, not hard. Mm, little horrific. Um, just because there's a lot of emotion in that movie. Um, very well done. That cast was phenomenal. And my uncle's like, oh, my God, TJ didn't see that. And I'm like, well, if I see it, you mean he was running around the house while it was on? Then yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't kids don't know what that is yeah i yeah. i remember seeing a lot i of tried to make kid. you watch hotel transylvania the other night he wasn't into it guys he wasn't it, having it there was not cool. enough so the scenes that have singing he was into and then like that's it that's his jam he he loves a nice singing and that's it that's funny were you guys into horror like like not necessarily like like bloody gory horror but like you know just darker stuff when you were when you were little kids oh, like horror, oh yes. horror. yeah because like yes. when i was a kid whenever there was like a cartoon and there was like a halloween episode i was loved it. all loved in it. on that episode loved, loved it. it i was loved always it. looking forward to that one, and, of, one of my favorite thing oh go ahead yeah no no i was just saying like like anytime there was something dark uh, like it, it didn't even have to be like like halloween themed but if it was something dark i just connected with it even when i was like a little kid and oh, yeah. I, I don't know I don't know what that, why that is, but uh, like, and and it's it's interesting because I, I remember Nightmare Before Christmas came out when I was maybe four years old, and um, we got it. Well, my mom got it for me, and I watched it, and I loved it, and I was going to watch it again because I used to rewatch like every Disney movie I had like forty times. Like I must have seen Aladdin like two hundred times as a kid. Oh, and, well, yeah. Nightmare Before Christmas, I watched it, and then the second night I went to watch it again, my mom was like, oh, you you can't watch that. There's something wrong with the the visual there or something like, or, or like the color's off or something like that. We'll have to get you another one. And she never got me another one. And that is so a Mama McNulty thing. It I is. Doing and, that. and like, I think like, like so psychologically for me, that was like something like, well, you know, if it's dark, you're not supposed to have it. And that only made me want it more. And I think yeah. that was, you know, something that just stuck with me over the course of my life, like just having Nightmare Before Christmas taken away from me and like always wanting to go back to horror. Oh, that's bad. well, yeah, speaking of taken away from you. One time I was a kid, I got in trouble for something oh. and TV was taken away for a week mm -hmm. and it was Halloween week. <gasps> it was the worst week. No. Of That's awful. Oh yeah, it was Where real rough, guys. What did you do? Because remember, I think I probably read more books. But remember, no, I mean, what did you do to get it taken away yeah. on, on that I week see. of all weeks? Listen, guys, uh, Alicia was a little bit of a troublemaker. <laughs> a I was little. She was being a little shocked. Was... Just a tad. <laughs> Just a day. That could have been when I had seen the arts and crafts show on public access television in which they were um, redecorating the ottoman. And so I took my mm. sister's and I cut my grandmother's ottoman. That could have been that week. Mm. I don't mm. really remember, but that, that might have been it. Listen, there was a lot of punishment in Alicia's life. Okay. That's hilarious. Uh, Brandon, for the rest of the interview, you need to stop saying how old you were <laughs> when just, things just are occurred. This is a courtesy to your hostesses because my who's, heart. Who said four? At you when, say, <laughs> who said four? Like, and Jen and I both went, we were 13. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you were like barely out of diapers and i'm like about to start high school awesome. oh, no don't worry brandon potty trained real early <laughs> oh that makes it better 
Jeez that's why Louise. he feels like the window's closing. Yeah. Man, that's what I'm saying. If it's just closing, like, where the hell? I don't even have a window. <laughs> my, my window You're just healed over. It's just a it's wall now. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of hot training, oh. I'm trying that now with my two-year-old. Uh-oh. It's going swimmingly. Wonderful. Good times. Swimmingly. As in you're swimming in pee? <laughs> Pretty much, yes. <laughs> <sighs> Brandon, do I make motherhood look sound as glamorous as you are imagining it? Um, no comment. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> he's, gonna, he's not trying to alienate his, yeah. his audience for his book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so what is, besides your novel, obviously, your favorite novel of all time, not even genre specific? Salem's Lot. Okay. That that one, I think it just hit me at the right time in my life. I knew it, he was going to say that. Just yeah, yeah, I just I love it to death, and I know it's like technically it's not the most brilliant novel out there, but it's so much fun to read, and it's it it's, it's so dark, read. and uh, you know it had a big influence on bad parts. There's, I mean, if you if you put the two books side by side and you know what they're about, you you can see similarities in there. Well, especially. Have you read Salem's Lot, Jen? No, I haven't. Oh, okay. I especially with this. That's Stephen King. Oh, yeah, you haven't read any of this. Yeah, yeah, right. I haven't yeah. read any of yeah. yeah. Did you see especially... the miniseries or? Mm-mm. No. No. I'm going to, I'm not, like, now I want to, though. Yeah. It, it's, it, it was, I make mean. Make sure you don't make the mistake I did. Watch the 1970s version, not the 1990s Rob Lowe version. Just a little. It from me to you. Although right. Rob Lowe, much better to look at. I was going to say, that. it's going to be hard to do because I like me some Rob Lowe. See, now there you go. That's, there we go. <laughs> that's the one. Uh, ben Affleck also makes a cameo, so be careful. Oh. No, I'm kidding. He's, he's, not, he's not in that. I made that Ben Affleck face. She bought it for a second. <laughs> no, I know. I was just making Ben Affleck face. <laughs> um... And Jen, what about you? What's your favorite novel of all time? Oh, novel? Like, just in, of any genre or horror specifically? Any genre. Oh, man. It would have to be, it's a novel called Redeeming Love. It's it's a real, it's like a romance book. Not a, not a sexy romance. It's like a, a romance about this guy. And I feel like I'm boring you guys already. But no, I like just the, looked it up. Oh, Francine Rivers? <laughs> yes, Francine Rivers. Okay. Uh, it's actually a Christian novel, but it's this guy, and he meets this woman, or he's he working on a farm, and he's praying to God about his wife, and then he goes to town, and he meets this woman, and she's, like, gorgeous, and all the men are looking at her, and he's, like, he hears God tell him, that's your wife, and he's, like, sweet, awesome, that's my woman, and then he finds out she's a prostitute, and he's, like, uh, well, that's not cool, so. Oh. <laughs> so, so it's, like, like, it's, like, a historical pretty woman? Yeah, kind yeah, kind of, and it's based on the book of Hosea, I guess, or the Bible, and so it's just, it's a very like it's a very long book, but it's very interesting how he gets how he has to get her to trust him because she doesn't trust him, she doesn't trust men. She's her mom's been prostituting her since she was a little kid, so she doesn't trust anyone, and it's just the, their relationship and him trying to get her to trust him and him wanting to give up and uh, being mad about the situation. He's like, I've done everything right. How could she be the person I'm supposed to marry? He wants one of those sweet farmer women. So I haven't read it in a while, but I, I'm I'm going to read it again because I've read it at least twice. But it's, it's I, a pretty good book. I just read their, um, they just announced a film adaptation. Yeah. Yeah, so. I'm excited about that. I don't really like who they cast as, as um, the main character, but I, I'm going to give it a shot. He, he doesn't seem. Holy he shit, has, it has, like, it has seven, 7,500 Amazon reviews and it has like five stars. I mean, yeah. that's. <laughs> it's a good. It's a good book. It's it's a good read for anyone out there who's interested. Yeah, but that's of all time. I haven't read a lot of horror books. I think Frankenstein was actually the scariest. No, The Oath is also. It's another Christian book. I read a lot of Christian books when I was younger. But The Oath is a horror book, but that's a Christian book, and that's scary too. There's a dragon. The that, uh, Frank Reddy. I typed in the oaf and some romantic comedy just popped up, so that can't be it. <laughs> Frank. No, I think that's oh, Frank Peretti. Okay, I got you. 
Yeah, that's another good one. That's that that one actually kind of scared me. And then, like I said, Frankenstein scared me. I read that in college. I remember reading one scene. And I was just like, I've never been that scared just reading a scene because then I imagined it, and I was like, oh my god, that's creepy. I don't. How about you, Alicia? What's yours? Um, the Bible. I like good fake story. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> um, this is hard. It's really a toss up between the catcher and the rye. Oh, love and, and the Great Gatsby. Oh, yeah, I know nobody was expecting them. Yeah, I, I didn't there. expect you to go for the, yeah. the classics yeah. like that. Um, like... you know what? I think I was very good at them. I loved F. Scott Fitzgerald, like, I love The Beautiful and the Damned. I love also The Great Gatsby took place. On my island, I have been to some of those places, so I think that holds. I do you dig the twenties? I do dig the twenties. Yeah. yeah, not the now, the, not the twenty twenties. These are no. not the twenty twenties. No. <laughs> I oh, man. like. I, I was even watching the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I love that show, which I love, and I have to tell you, and listen. I don't like all the backwardsness of the time. I just need to preface this. But for me, the music, I love it. Yeah. And yeah. the outfits. The, 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 the fashion. That's what I was going to say. Every time I'm watching fashion. it, I'm like, I oh. need to dress like that. But I we'd be to... looked at like we were crazy. I don't give a shit. If I had the money... I would walk. Well, that's probably street. also my problem. I don't have money. <laughs> I would rock that stuff. Like I would get it custom made, like the coats and the dresses. I, I love just, that feminine look. I and watched like the episode today, where um, Sophie Lennon hates Midge's coat and gives her the fur, and now Rose is losing her goddamn yeah. mind. <laughs> Screaming the word fuck in Temple. Rose, you're my angel. I love That's it. That's hilarious. For me, Amy Sherman Palladino, while not always perfect as a showrunner, not always perfect as a writer, really hits it a lot. Yeah. And her shows always, they, they make you feel good. Even when there's drama, even when there's conflict at the root, they're fun. Mm-hmm. They're happy. They've got great soundtracks. They got yeah. great scores. I enjoy that. As far as things outside of the horror genre, Brandon, what do you enjoy as far as TV, et cetera? I kind of bend toward fantasy with a lot of things. Okay. Um, I mentioned Joe Abercrombie. Um, as far as um, Growing up, I played a lot of the Final Fantasy video games, and they were a big influence on me wanting to become a writer because I was just like, I, I don't know if your husband plays them. Was he into those? Final Fantasy? Yeah. I'm not no. sure. Because they were, I mean, they were. Sorry, huge. guys, I'm trying to answer. Yeah, no, no. But, about my but, pay last but I mean, they were huge for me growing up, especially, you know, high school age, like when I was starting to like make sense of the world and make sense of myself, they yeah. meant a lot to me. And, um, I always liked fantasy. The, the hard part for me is that in, um, when it comes to books, typically fantasy novels are extra large. And I already told you guys, I'm a slow reader. I don't have the yeah. patience for, you know, heavy descriptions of what people are wearing. So, I don't either. um, when I do get like a fantasy novel that I like, I will stick with it. But, um, you know, uh, other than that, I do stick mostly to like horror thrillers um, with audiobooks, I do mostly nonfiction. I think it's just easier for me to follow uh, mm-hmm. or, or actually easier for me to pick up. Like if I drive somewhere for 20 minutes and then I don't go back to the audiobook again until Monday or something like that, yeah. you know, then it, it, it's just easier for me with that. Um, but I, I do stick, you know pretty well entrenched in horror for the most part it's just like i um i just like the you know i i like dark things i think i think that that's ultimately what i'm trying to say yeah yeah Yeah, me too i've loved it since i was a kid and my dad 
he never it was never scary scary it was always like that's funny like he would take me to see friday the 13th when i was like two years older because you know they came out in the 80s and i was super young but he was that's fake blood he would point out that it wasn't real so i never got this we have to have dad on the podcast oh i'm sure he would do it he would love it yeah i would i would love that i was actually (laughs) listening to an episode of punch up the jam with miel and demi whom i adore demi was part of the gilmore guys podcast and miel's father comes on and they just such a fun time and her dad was a love um yes we yeah he yeah, we need your dad. I'd say yeah. we'd get my dad, but the whole world knows I'm lying. So. <laughs> so. Yeah, he's totally the reason why I'm into horror, because he would take yeah. me to see those movies, and now I probably love more horror more than he does, because I'm always like, I want to watch that scary movie. Uh, all the new ones and all that stuff, I'm down. If it's horror, I'm down. I like the adrenaline rush of being scared. It's just, I love it all. I, I can't Sometimes imagine not so, liking horror. It's just so hard to get scared these days. Oh, yeah, definitely. With the new stuff, especially. I have my list of movies that actually can still scare me when I watch it that creep me out. Yeah. Uh, like Dead Silence, that one will always be creepy because it's dolls. You can't, that's never not going to be dolls scary. Dolls are creepy, yes. <laughs> I don't like them. The Grudge scared me. I've never my, that one actually did scare my dad in theaters, and I had I had never seen my dad get scared before. But that scene where she lifts the sheets and her face is right there under the covers freaked us out. Like that was so scary. So I do have my list of movies that are actually scary. But in general, I just like the idea of you're supposed to be scared. I guess. Midsummer. Yeah. Yes. See, I don't even like to be scared so much as unsettled. That's why I want to watch Heredity because everyone says oh, yeah, that same director as Midsummer. Yeah, yeah, same guy. So yeah, you're, you're, you'll love it if you love Midsummer. Yeah, yeah. I like to be unsettled. Like I got that say, movie is unsettling as shit. Yes, it's interesting <laughs> because, and I know that they get a lot of flack in the horror community, but I love the hostels, especially Hostel Two. It yeah, Jen, thank you. No, I yep. know, I know they're horrible. <laughs> But they're very, very unsettling to me. Yeah. I have um, not, yeah, I've not actually sat through one of them. I remember in college, I had a buddy who was, you know, he was watching them and I catch like, you know, five minutes of it. And it just, you know, it just seemed like, oh, there was no story to it. So I never really gave it a chance. I got to yeah. say that I didn't love the Hostel 1 storyline. And funnily enough, I think maybe just because Hostel 2, it's women who are hunted and attacked, that it it sits a little worse. It resonates. And also, I have to say, the first girl to get chosen and killed, um, a part of me really resonated with her. Like, her death really unsettled me because this poor girl goes off with this guy and she always felt like the loser like the girl that no guy would ever like Mm, and now this guy chooses her and stupidly she leaves with him and just as a girl who didn't really get super like not that I'm super attractive but didn't get comfortable with her looks until her late 20s early 30s that really resonated with me, this feeling like, oh, this person thinks I'm beautiful and you've never yeah. felt that before and you want to trust that feeling. Yeah. So that unsettled me just because, I mean, thankfully that never happened. I, I was raised a little, I mean, it's a hard yeah. one, but yeah. like if I hadn't died and my father found out I had gone off with some <laughs> right. weird man in the woods. I would have been murdered anyway. Yeah. So yeah. six in one hand, a half dozen in the See, other. And I'm, I'd have been like, oh, he likes me. What's wrong with him? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'd be like, oh, hell no. He's definitely crazy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot go into the woods with him. <laughs> did you guys, um, last year, did you see Us? I have not seen Us yet. Us is unsettling to me. I, yeah, I won't say why. Was, so Okay. So the whole world should know. Um, because I have every streaming service, I refuse to pay per watch until... Hi, Papa McNulty. It's Alicia. 
Oh, you're wearing <laughs> headphones. He yeah, can't he hear can't, me. He can't hear you. I'm like waving to Bob him. Yep. Yeah. And he didn't even bother to turn around or nothing. Well, because he yeah. can't hear me. I literally just screamed in poor Brandon's I, face. Yeah. I, I don't I know how that, headphones yeah. work, apparently. Brandon didn't bother to even turn around. He was like, she can just yell at me from now until she turns purple. I'm just going to sit here and stare at the screen. <laughs> He's like, I do not want to bring him into this. <laughs> um, yeah, but yes, I, I saw. I thought it could have been a little better, but it was the what what it was was definitely unsettling. Um. So yes. So oh. So I wait until it comes on a streaming service that I own. So it's on HBO Max now. Okay. I own HBO Max, so now I will watch it. And I'm sure it's been on there for a little while, but we just got it again. Yeah. Yeah. One other one, um, the seventies Wicker Man. Loved it. Oh, it's terrifying. Didn't it's, see it. Didn't didn't Nicholas Cage do a? Yeah, yeah. Oh, don't, don't don't do that to yourself though. Just just. <laughs> no, Jen, we're gonna do it. We're gonna cover oh, yeah, Wicker we Man. To. It's on our list, and yes. then you just hear us bitch about the remake for an hour. Yes. Yes. The first oh, one is so to. good. Oh my god, the mask scene. Oh. Love yes. I love creepy masks. The first you know, one, you know, the first Wicker Man can scare me in the middle of the day when I have people ooh. around me. It's that terrifying. <laughs> Those are the well, best. And also I because very similar to Midsommar in the cult feeling, yeah. it oh. is shot in a way that makes you feel safe. Mm-hmm. And especially in the beginning, like there's so much happiness. Um, I actually think... Midsommar might have actually hit even a little scarier oh. if you only knew Danny was going through the grief, if you hadn't seen it. If mm. your first, if the first death on screen was that jump. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So really, I, if people haven't seen Midsommar, do not listen to this episode. Yeah. I, I know you, you're saying that um, with, with what happens. Danny's parents and sister, yeah. Jed. See, I, I think they have to do that, though, because if you don't open with that, it's a long wait before the actual horror George, elements George, come okay, in. Okay, I see yeah. what you're saying. Because, yeah. uh, I mean, you you could, yeah, but... I, actually I, happens. You're another hour in before that jump. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I think you, you need that just to set the tone, what kind of story this is going to be. And then later on, you can worry about, you know the actual darker stuff but if you set it up like um this is something that i do with all my novels like because they're they typically are going to be like thrillers so i open up with a scene that is fast paced and exciting because i don't I want like i don't want it to be like well oh here's the main character in their daily life i, I don't want something I bad that. happening up front yeah. yeah, I hate when they just do all this character development and storyline, and I'm like, yeah. eh, I'm watching a horror movie. I really couldn't care less, and these people are probably going to die anyway, so I don't, I don't something, need... Something, yeah, something exciting or something mysterious. You're, you're yeah. spot on, Jen. you got to have well, something Wes up front. Wes Craven does say yeah. that. He says, you got to give them a big punch in the beginning. He had said that in an interview post-Scream 1 with the Drew Barrymore scene. Um... Then with Jada Pink, oh, oh, that's terrifying. That scene in Scream Two, where Jada Pink is in a room full of people and nobody will help her, like that. When I saw that, I was like, "That's like my worst fear." Like, you've got all these people around you and you're still gonna die because no the bystander one effect. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. That's terrible. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think it, it just goes back to like even if you introduce yourself to some other person, I mean, you're not gonna tell them, "Oh, well." Here's what I do, you know, every single day of my life and it's repetitive and it's boring. You're going to say something like, oh, well, I'm very good at, uh, you know, playing guitar or singing or I have some kind of special talent or whatever it is. My window shutting. My window shutting. Yeah. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's get through with this before it shuts. Come on. Hurry. Yes, that is pee on my pants. I'm potty training a two-year-old. Yeah, there you go. You Things, like cool. Things, Things like that. Something something to grab them. That's the point. Something yeah. to grab them. Uh, well, thankfully, it's 2020 and we are not allowed. But, yeah. People love it. This is the content they come to us for. <laughs> uh, okay. Were there any questions that I wanted to ask that I did not? 
You tell me. I'm not in your head. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm looking up the the my notes. Hold on. You don't want to be up here, people. It's it's mm-hmm. not great. I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> oh, um, so uh the last thing that I did want Brandon to let you all know is um he has a YouTube channel. Mm. And uh, I watched this week's episode, Five Horror Tropes That He Loves. A couple months back, he did Five Horror Tropes That He Hates. So, watch them both. Uh, I, I I prefer shitting on things, Brandon. <laughs> That's just me. Um, but they were both very good videos. What is yeah, the channel called? It's called uh, Writer Brandon McNulty. Um the premise for the channel was I wanted to give writing advice that I wish I had received earlier in my career because there are so many points in my writing career where I would learn something. I'd be like, oh, if I just knew that three years ago or two years yeah. ago or whatever, I could be so much further along and I wouldn't have to worry about my window shutting. So I I, I ended up, you know, going into the channel with that idea. I started it early last year and it was it took a while for me to get comfortable with it, but uh, recently I've gotten some subscribers and you know people who are there week in, week out, and they're interested I in say it. Say, so. I was one of the first subscribers. Oh, you were? Yeah, of course I was. I mm. oh yeah, because you you saw it on Twitter. Yeah, I remember that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I have uh, nothing if not a supportive friend. I know. I hey, I'd not say anything bad about you. Yeah. I, I, can't, I I can't thank you enough for just you know being helpful with bad parts last year because you, you were there at the right time. You know, I needed somebody to look at it. You came through for me in two days. I mean, and you're you're always liking my tweets whenever I'm tweeting about the the videos or whatever it is. So no, I mean you you're legit. You've been nothing but supportive. Can't can't thank you enough for it. But uh, the um the videos like like basically like I, I try to be, you know, as concise as I can with them, try to keep them under or around eight minutes. Um, you know, some, some weeks I'll get into technical nitty gritty stuff, like, you know, how to, how to outline a scene or, you know, what every scene needs or something like that. And then there's other times I'll do, you know, videos that are a little more fun where I'll I'll talk about my preferences with horror tropes, for instance, or maybe I'll break down, um, you know, how the main character in the Mandalorian works as an anti-hero, stuff like that. So, I mean, there's, there's some pretty decent variety to it. And whenever people in the comments section ask me to do a video, I'm more than happy to do it. And I find that uh, those video requests end up being my most popular videos. Like I have one that, Mm. um, you know, I was at the beginning of the year, I was only at like a hundred subscribers. And then somebody was like, can you do a video on internal dialogue? And next thing I know, like that one's, you know, that video just you know, exploded. And I think it's at like 3000 right now, which is a lot for me at this stage. And, uh, you know, every single day I'm getting like, you know, 25 to 50 views of it. So it's, it's been great, but, uh, you know, what Brandon doesn't know is it's just Alicia (laughs) rewatch. It's you hitting the refresh button. Yeah. I I wonder, I often wonder if that does count towards the metric, because I gotta say, I find the Gilmore guys, podcast very relaxing it kind of it's it's a warm blanket just like the show is that I can listen to go to sleep to like listen I love time sock by Dan Cummings but I really don't want visions of Albert Fish running around my head as I'm trying Mm -hmm. to sleep so often but I have listened to all the Gilmore guys podcasts um, Jason Manzukis has been a guest of theirs many times, so oftentimes I'll throw one of those on and re-listen. And I do wonder if that, like, how the metrics work, like, if it's... The analytics, I think, are individual. Per are... listen or per person? Person, I think. So per not account. per device. From what I understand, I think... You know, as long as you're not the person who uploads them, if you keep watching it, it will count as a view each time you watch it. Because think about like like those those songs that have 50 million views. I mean, Mm. people are not watching them just once. They're watching them multiple times. And so, so, I mean, so for YouTube. But for like as a podcaster, if you're looking at your analytics, it's telling Mm -hmm. you uh, individual like new plays. It's not giving you right uh, repeats. Because you you can only like a video once, but you can view it 
multiple times. Multiple that's that's times. my understanding. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, th- that makes sense. There was something I read where. By the uh, way, Ale- Jen, we have two hundred and eleven total plays. Yeah, buddy. Awesome. Woo-hoo. How long have you guys been doing it now? Uh, since months? August twenty first. Okay. Yeah. A little over. A month Almost three months. months. Yeah. It's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Three months? How are you like, doing math? Like closer to two months. Right? I was an English major, so. <laughs> August tw- <laughs> well, September twenty fifth. August. 21st to September 21st, month. We're not even at October 21st. Okay. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Like, I know I was an English major too, but that was, that was pathetic. I, uh, that, was, that was rough. The Pythagorean theorem there, babe. I just, yeah. <laughs> he threw it out there. He, you know, but that makes us sound better. Like, it's even less than three months for those yeah. who are... Not you, keeping not count. Two hundred and eleven views in less than two months. Even better. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah there you just go. Just gotta see if your interview episode will get more or less views than Ryan Kruger. Hmm. He did. He um. Well, his sh- his movie hasn't come to theaters yet. It's Fried Barry. It's in the. But uh, that was a fun interview too. Just like this. Do you only <laughs> post it on iTunes? It's on iTunes, Spotify. Spotify. Okay. I think Stitcher. Okay, so you get it. You have it on multiple sites. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's on um, Apple, Spotify, Anchor, Overcast, and Google. Okay. Yeah. Apparently, did you see we have uh, people now in New Zealand? Yes. Pakistan, Netherlands. Pakistan's my favorite. Russia, Singapore. <laughs> Singapore. It's unbelievable that, that they one. care what we like, have to say out there. Yeah, I'm like, who is listening to us in Singapore? It, it's the same it. way with, with my YouTube channels. The same way I get people from all over Europe, and it's like, really? You guys care? Like, why? I mean, yeah, I thought, like, why? It's, it's so crazy. And, and a lot of the people I noticed, like, um, like English is their second language. So they come to my channel because they want to learn how to write better, which makes mm-hmm. sense. But it wasn't what I initially thought. I always thought, like, oh, well, it's going to be a channel for, you know, English speaking writers who want to learn more about the craft. And I yeah. never guessed that, you know, there, there were people all over the world so interested in writing. So, I mean, one guy, he's he was from Saudi Arabia, and he he contacted me on Twitter. We were talking for a while, and he was telling me about how it's so hard to write and find like a writing group because obviously, like they have so much censorship out there, and it uh-huh. really just like for me, it put things in perspective. And it's like, wow, I mean, like here in America, I mean, like any college you go to, you can find like a, a writing club or something like that, and you know. But for him, he's got to like Usually be a couple. Yeah. All of them very beat Nikki. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I mean it's it's not it's not a hard thing to run into, but uh, even our library, like pre COVID yeah, them too. Had writing workshops. Now we can't have them. I mean, but our library has been doing great stuff. Yeah. Um you know, f- virtually with the mm-hmm. kids and everything. And now we've started to have um daily podcasts a uh, daily like and now we're doing outside programs so um have you ever done any talks or anything at your local library brandon do they carry your novel they the one down the street from me and this is like a small borough that i live in they have the book they bought it off me um a couple weeks right. after re- release, which was really cool. They somebody somebody told them about it, and they're like, "Hey, uh, we'd be happy to buy a copy and put it in the library." And I was like, "Oh, that was cool," because that was the exact same library I borrowed Salem's Lot for, from. Oh, that's so awesome. kind of brought me full circle, which was very cool. But um, yeah, so they have it. I don't know about any of the other local libraries though, but uh, we'll have to see. I, I once things settle down with COVID, I'll right. You know, I'll head out there and, you know, reach out to them and say like, Hey, I have a book out. Uh, are you interested in having me for any events or anything like that? And right. would you be interested in carrying the book. So. Yeah. Cause I love when local and our library, and I don't know if your local libraries have this Brandon, mm. but ours has a very su- 
extensive section that says local authors and it's just mm. our long island authors and um that's very cool see i think you you guys would have more authors there in general because new york would be more of a hot spot for creativity and everything where i'm at um not so much but gotcha. uh, yeah but I, i'd have to check i to be honest like i I am very like when I go somewhere, I know exactly what I need to get. Like if I go to a library, I know, okay, I'm going to get this one Michael Crichton audio book and then I'm going to get out. And that's it. Like I just really, oh no, I listen, <laughs> I don't browse. I just, I get oh, what I no. need and I leave. Oh no, I can like tell you my whole library's layout. I can tell you, well, <laughs> um, we just had our library book sale. Uh, stuff a tote bag for twelve dollars. I gotta tell you, I feel like I robbed. Oh, I, it. I got four Stephen King hardcovers, and in addition to ten other books, I got them into that tote. Which, by the way, proves that I am still very good at Tetris. <laughs> <laughs> what for? Best. I need I to know. Those. I got shit. Ugh, okay. Because years ago, I got I got the Dead Zone for a dollar. I got. Firestarter Ooh. for a dollar. Mm-hmm. Firestarter. I love that movie. Uh, I feel like I got I got The Outsider. I was trying to think oh. I got. I got um Doctor Sleep. Oh wow. I got You got recent hardcovers. Wow, that's unbelievable. Yeah, and I got two others. They were they were older though. Okay. Yeah. I'm more impressed that I was able to fit those into a tote bag and <laughs> other books. Like, I got TJ some Halloween books. I got, like, my dad loves Jeter. They had a Jeter book. I love the library. We're yeah. making scarecrows there on Saturday. One other thing I love about libraries, large print books. I'm a big fan of those because uh, the window's closing on Brandon. Yeah, I got it. For me, and I, it, it's just in my head, you know. It's like the text is moving faster. <laughs> it's so large. I just, I, I love that. that. Big print. It's so yeah. funny. I can't read those to save my life. My oh, eyes go blurry. Wow. I yeah, have a friend and her, she keeps the font on her tech, on her phone so big. I'm like. Dude, with my Kindle, that like I'll read an ebook and I have it at like almost maximum. No, I have it at whatever like. Whatever they consider the regular font is. Normal book reading, yeah. Yeah. That's... Yes. I, oh, man. I, I just, that, that's just, that's soul crushing when I have to read that. It's just like, oh, wow, it took me a minute to read that page or it took me, eight. I can't do this. I'm, 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 I'm powering down here. I got, yeah, I need larger. I think of reading like that. Do you wear any kind of eye correcting wear? I, um, I had LASIK a couple of years oh, ago. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, that was God, best, I really best decision I made in a long time because, I mean, yeah, it's going to so pay much. for itself over time. And for oh, now, yeah. I don't have to deal with contacts or glasses. Or oh, anything. I, I could years. get it. I would get it. Mm-hmm. I would. I, once again, because um, of that skin disorder, mm-hmm. I suffer very badly from dry eye. So I am uh, not a candidate for. Yeah, like, you have to keep food. putting drops in like every yeah. hour, right after you have yeah. it done. Yeah. With the procedure's freaky because like you're you're put on like this little cot and you're lying on your back and this machine kind of hovers over your eye oh. and and they actually like like they slice open your cornea yep. and get under and it you're, to. Oh, good, we're good, we're good. It, and you're it's awake. Like, yeah, and you're awake through the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. and and like they um. I, I, they use the laser to just, um, I forget, they, they kind of cut it. I, probably not the yeah, right terminology, yeah. but they cut it down and they reshape yeah. the eye. I had to go, my right eye was fine. And then I had to go back for my left eye because it didn't take because um, I think my left eye has an astigmatism, which means it's more shaped like a football than like an actual normal round eyeball. So I had to get that done twice. But uh, wow. I, yeah, I was... Um, it, the procedure is really freaky, though. Like, like, yeah, this, is, like, is. and and they use like this little paintbrush to, after they cut open your cornea. It, they they take open a flap, and then they use like a paintbrush to put it down, or it felt like a paintbrush. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Lay it back down. Yeah, it was. Lately. Yeah, it was freaky. That it that's like weird. that's like horror sci-fi shit right there. It was just yeah. oh man. And but, I felt the burning of the laser. I was like, 
Mm, don't oh, like that. I, yeah, I didn't smell the burning. Did they give you like a uh, like a Valium or something? I had some. They gave me something. Before yeah, they gave me. I I threw up like right <laughs> after it. it was oh just, no! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically, I I had the I had the surgery. I went home. I slept, and I never nap. And then when I napped, I went downstairs and just like just just dumped my guts in a bucket. It was just terrible. Hey, hi, monkey. Hey, TJ. Got a visit all. Look at that. Say good night. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was close enough. Say yeah. bye bye. We'll count that. Say yeah. bye bye. He Try likes the microphone. Yeah, yeah, he does. I love you, monkey. Night night, my love. Give mama a big night night hug. <laughs> oh. oh, I love you. <laughs> You're not going to say it back? He's got the Toy Story pajamas on. He does. Love you. And everything. Love He's you. like, are we talking about my pajamas? <laughs> He's got a lot of Toy Story pajamas. These were actually hand-me-downs from... A- hey, Ed. How's it going? <laughs> yes, Brandon and Ed also know each other. Mm-hmm. And Ed edits your videos or your, your audio files? Sometimes. Sometimes I do it. It really depends on how much needs to get done. Yeah. Well, you need to edit out Jen's just unforgivable <laughs> statement from earlier. So. Yes. So many. So many. <laughs> These would get us canceled here in 2020. A lot of canceled yeah. things. I'll be. Love you. Love you. Did you guys hear that? Did the mic pick that up? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We got an earful. We're not cutting that out. <laughs> <laughs> I want the whole world Evidence to know that you're loved. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, by a two-year-old. In court ten years from now, this will come in handy for you. <laughs> right. Of course he loves me. I'm in charge of the uh, tweets. After he runs <laughs> off. and. <laughs> yeah. it's fine. I, I was a good mother on my podcast. He even said so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, the other day I wouldn't let him have... Um, chocolate chip cookies before dinner mm. so i was the worst mother on the planet so oh, yeah. i was, i said to him i go you put him for a transfer <laughs> yeah i'll give you the paperwork yeah very easy very easy very easy the question is would you let him watch nightmare before christmas of course <laughs> that's all that's all brandon wants to know yeah what is this why did this pop up no but i did not click this what is happening here? I don't want any of that. Um, I don't want none of it. No, my screen just did something really weird, and I don't know why. It's my fault. It's the problem. Yeah, you, it's, you it's broke it. <laughs> um. So, what are you doing for Halloween this year in your um, area? I am actually going to be helping out writers through this program called rev pit um okay it was actually a i i won the contest with bad parts and now they're doing like this thing where they have like the um the alumni i guess you would say like they they come back and they read like you know the opening chapters of writers who are struggling or they're trying to get feedback or whatever and uh, i'll be you know helping out people with their query letters which are basically what they send um, they send in as far as what the story is about and, you know, how to describe it and stuff like that. And I'll also be helping, helping them with like their opening chapters and stuff like that. So, Oh, very cool. Yeah. So, I mean, That's it's, awesome. it, it's good. And, you know, Rev Pit was really good to me, so I'm happy to give back. It's no problem at all. And then, um, aside from that, I'll probably just be writing. Cause I mean, I've been, I've been, uh, I'm an introvert. So this whole, you know, shutdown thing has been, you know, not too bad on me. Fine for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, poor mom, though. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. They could not be more opposite. Like, he's oh, an she's... introvert, and Mama yeah. McNulty would like to talk to everyone, be around everybody at all times. Oh, like, she's yeah. been losing her shit for, what, six months now? <laughs> I love seven? It. Seven? I can't do math, but I mean, yeah, for a long we know time. You don't know been... months, Brandon. Don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> We've learned Brandon does not know how a calendar works. <laughs> I will not be writing any calendar-themed horror novels. <laughs> or he will, and he'll be sending them to Alicia. Hey, 
Could you check that I did these? Is this the right math? <laughs> right. Calendar themed. There's the. Oh, I mean, what day is it? There's the the Batman comic, um, the Long Halloween. That's a calendar themed one. It's a good sure. one too. Sure. Yeah, so it can be I'm done. Sure, look that up. Yeah. It can be done. That was actually that one influenced Dark Knight. Um, Christopher Nolan cited that as being like one of the bigger influences for the movie. So Long Halloween Ooh. is definitely one to check out. Yeah. I'm gonna have to get that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll probably just be you know watching horror movies, you know. Reading horror books, playing horror games. Are Sounds you like a great October. either? You guys into like video game survival horror? Oh, or anything? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I like Silent like, Hill, like, Resident Evil, yeah. that kind of stuff. Oh, I, I used to play Resident Evil all the time. I haven't played in a while. Yeah. Um, I'm playing We Happy Few. Yeah. Have you few. heard of that? No, I haven't. Kind of like Bioshock. Have you heard of Bioshock? I've did. Yeah, I've I played Bioshock. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like that that kind of game. Uh, yeah, I just looked it up. I see what you I mean. love how Brandon, yeah, immediately looks anything up. Yeah, I, I, I like to you know, know what I'm talking about. Otherwise, I yeah. say something stupid about the child museums, and you guys, <laughs> <laughs> you guys, pick me apart for it. So I gotta, I gotta know what I'm talking about. That is fair. That's a that's a good horror idea, though. The child museums, like like the 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 Jen interpretation of them, or. Yeah. <laughs> We already they did the House of Wax episode. It should have been there. Wax, kids, yikes, oh. that's creepy. Yeah. Kids in general are creepy. They really yeah. are. That's why they're in a lot of horror movies. Mm -hmm. They're just creepy. Kids and dolls and things with children. So I, I was speaking. So today we had like just a large flock of birds on our property. Mm -hmm. And Ed pointed out the reason we get that so prevalently in here is because literally we're a mile from the beach. So most birds as they're zoning, stop, stop like every few feet until they have to go over water for a while. Makes sense. And my son was transfixed by them. And I'm like, well, here we go. I'm just another episode of the birds. Like <laughs> remake the birds with my kid. He's being Chucky for Halloween. Oh, oh it's no. perfect. Yeah, I can't have that. I can't have oh. that. There's it's a girl at my, my office child. who looks exactly like Chucky. It's like, cool. especially a girl at your office. You yeah, said. a girl at my office, and I told her about it, and like I showed her a picture of him on the internet because she was like, "Oh yeah, I think I know what you mean." And I showed her, and it was like one to one comparison. Like she looks exactly like a Chucky doll. Did she doll. appreciate this? <laughs> She's got a morbid <laughs> sense of humor. So oh, yeah. Good. Because I got to tell you right now, if you had told me I looked like a doll, you might be getting punched in the face. I was like, who does that? <laughs> like, how young thought, is this person? I, I need to know how young I, she is. I was She's, like, oh, surely he just thought this in his I'm head. No, you like He's went up to her. Oh. Wow. She's around my And she just, wow. I mean, she has like the red hair and like the the big creepy smile and that's you know that's, that's just what perhaps you don't tell her to listen to this episode <laughs> i'm just gonna would you like me to cut this out to save you <laughs> i'll, I'll be fine I'll, I'll be fine no, she, I, oh she could god. take a joke if, even if that's she does funny. stumble across, across this oh she probably will oh my god wow she like looked it up and made her look at it that's amazing <laughs> <laughs> What's more amazing is she didn't know who Chucky was. <laughs> she was like, yeah. she's like, kind of like, she had like an idea. She's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I know the doll, right? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, I don't oh, think I look like the doll. And I've noticed this. Like, I yeah. think that Chucky, because we were so, we were actually young when it came out. And what we realized, have you realized this in talking to people your age? So a lot of, Jen, I'm talking to you, our oh, age. Yes. I'm okay. <laughs> I noticed that a lot of parents didn't realize at first that Chucky was a horror movie. They just thought it was a movie with a doll, and so, like, you were mm -hmm. allowed to watch it. Oh. No. Yeah. Oh, you have to cut. <laughs> no. Well, you were just allowed to watch horror movies, so you're yeah, on a different... So you I didn't have to sneak it. it. So a lot... it was a horror movie. Right. But a lot of kids, well, when they were kids, when Chucky came out, their parents didn't realize it was a horror movie. They just saw, like, 
they were like, oh, can child, we watch this child movie? play. Right. <laughs> yeah, we watched Child's Play. It's about a doll. And, you know, to be fair, 80s parents, they were fabulous. They didn't give a fuck. And they oh, were like, man. sure. And um, Generation yeah. X, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we all we all um saw it so young that we all say like, oh no, it's not a great movie. We just have such kind like memories of it because we were so young when we watched it. Yep, yep. Yeah. I lo- I love Child's Play. Gen oh, X so is good. best, okay? The remake was mm-hmm. good too. Last year, I think came out. If you'd like Ooh. to come back on for that episode when we do it, Brandon, please. Feel yeah, back. we're gonna. Huh? I'm gonna save all my thoughts on that. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. All right. Um, <laughs> I do love the memes. That's like, dear boomers and millennials, just know there's a generation between both of you that can't stand it, either one of you. <laughs> XOXO Gen Xers, <laughs> and it's true. Uh, truly, truly. I'm so excited for Halloween because I love candy. Yeah. I kind of want to do a candy bracket to see who would win, get some votes going on the Instagram. That would be fun. We can do that. Yeah. We can do that. Well, I think it's so interesting because you always have the chocolate versus anti-chocolate people. I'm a peanut butter guy. Peanut butter. I love Reese's. Peanut butter cups are my favorite. I love Reese's anything gummy. Butter. Give me a Swedish. I love gummies Ooh, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Give me a gummy bear. Give me a, gummy yeah. bear, give gummy me a bears, yeah. taffy. Ooh, a banana laffy taffy. Gummy worm. Mm-hmm. Those are the best. The laffy taffy. Yes. <laughs> well, gummy worms are great too because you can put them in that pudding. You make oh the dirt. Pudding dirt, dirt, dirt is unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, I love it. I love those. I love a nice love theme them. party, guys. Yeah. We're having an That's open house on the front yard for people, so I'll let you all know how that goes, because I'm thinking that was probably really stupid of me, but the wheels are in motion, so... <laughs> it's fine. It'll be fine. Yeah, Just keep so... your neighbor's lights on. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's from <laughs> one to four, so... Like, kid-friendly. It's from one to four. Okay. Gotcha. <sighs> all right. We have exhausted. Well, I don't think we have exhausted all topics. I feel like the three of us could probably talk for five more hours, but we're gonna wrap this for our listeners because we're at two oh five. Jesus Christ! We're gonna have to cut this. Down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm know. seeing two thirteen. Yeah. Oh, I'm God. at two oh five. Why are you seeing two thirteen? I don't know. It just says two thirteen. Oh, that, no, no. So you're seeing like our total record time. Oh. But I didn't start pressing record for a while. You're just okay. the total time we were talking. Yeah. All right. Jen yeah. and I are technically at 2.16. You were late. Yeah, All right. I'm at 2.16. No <laughs> just like to tell you you were late. Well, <laughs> Okay, so guys, this is the interview with Brandon. And then next week, we will be delving into the world of Halloween, the original. So Brandon's that's what you can expect for next time. As always, have a frightening Friday. Bye. Later. See you guys.